A very good evening to all our viewers. This is Beyond Wallet. I'm Sumit Chaturvedi. Let's go straight to our top headlines. Apple CEO threatened to drop Uber's app out of App Store after Uber violated Apple's privacy guidelines, say reports. The luxury shoe and bag retailer Jimmy Choo has put itself up for sale in a move that took the market by surprise. Cautioning the major world economies against protectionist moves, Reserve Bank of India Governor Ujit Patel says using trade instruments for protectionism may take a nation on a trajectory different. And Nifty hit a fresh record high in the morning trade, supported by positive global cues. Now straight to our top story where tech giant Apple had once threatened to kick out Uber application from its App Store. Well, according to a report in the US media, Apple CEO Tim Cook had warned Uber in 2015 for not following its App Store guidelines. Now Tim Cook met then Uber CEO Travis Kalanick at the Apple headquarters and pulled him up over the Uber app's ability to persistently identify iPhone devices in a process called fingerprinting. Now under this, Uber could identify an iPhone and prevent itself from being fooled even after the device was erased of its contents. Now this is a breach as per Apple's privacy guidelines. This is not the first time Uber has come under fire for tracking device location. Last year, Uber was accused of tracking location of passengers even if they were not using the taxi hailing service for weeks, weeks together. And bad news coming for taxi drivers from India also where Ola's drivers are negotiating a rough road after banking institutions have withdrawn support to them even as they cope with incentive cuts. Now State Bank of India is putting a stop on disbursing loans to cab drivers from Ola and Uber as many of them are unable to repay the loans. Now Bangalore, which is the largest market for ride-hailing apps, is a defaulter of SBI accounting nearly a fifth of its loan book. Another city on the list is Mumbai with the default amounting to around 60 crore rupees. Well, this is to bring more drivers on their platform. Ola and Uber were offering incentives to drivers. A few years ago, the drivers earned lucrative amounts ranging from 70,000 rupees to rupees 1 lakh. But now their incomes have almost halved. With less money in hand, it has become difficult for Ola drivers to pay back banks. Also, as more Ola taxis ply on roads, the number of Ola drivers falling in the loan defaulting category are more. According to industry experts, another factor that affects loan payment capacity is cash payments. Now, many Ola customers pay and accept more cash payments from customers, which is a drawback as the process to deduct loan installments before settling payments for driver gets disrupted with more cash payments. News from the luxury space where luxury shoe and bag retailer, pardon me, bag retailer Jimmy Choo has put itself up for sale in a move that took the market by surprise. The retailer said it had decided to conduct review of various strategic options open to the company to maximize value for its shareholders and that it was seeking offers for the businesses. The move was backed by company's independent directors and Jab Luxury, its majority shareholder, with a stake of 68%. Now, shares in Jimmy Choo jumped 10% to a record high on the news, valuing the group at more than £720 million. Any sale of firm is expected to attract interest from strategic American buyers as well as Middle Eastern buyers, Chinese and Russian bidders too. Now, Jimmy Choo was founded in London by 
a Malaysian fashion designer Jimmy Choo himself in 1996. It runs 150 stores around the world, opening 10 last year as well as refitting 16 shops. To talk more about the Jimmy Choo's sale and this time the company's sale, we are joined by our correspondent Molly Gambir. Well, good evening, Ms. Uh, Molly. What do you have to say on this? Why is finally Jimmy Choo uh, is on the block? Well, Sumit, an interesting sale, isn't it? Uh, the luxury brand now up for grabs, calling all holics if they're interested in this. Now, here's more on what's really happening. Now, since its foray into fashion, we've seen how it has developed more pedestrian tastes. Uh, it spent almost $30 billion over the last few years, building a challenge to Nestle SA in the coffee sector, uh, snapping up companies from the expert uh, maker DE Master Blenders. Uh, uh, just a few weeks ago, it agreed to acquire Panera Bread Company for $7.2 billion. Now, JB, of course, has built a high-end portfolio about five years ago uh, through its uh, Labelux subsidiary, picking up shoemaker Bally and leather jacket and boot company Bell Staff. Now, this, of course, looks like the start of the long-wanted consolidation in luxury goods. But here's more on what's really happening. The timing, of course, looks opportunistic. Uh, Jimmy Choo's share price has fluctuated since its October 2014 debut along with the rise and fall of uh, the Chinese luxury demand. Uh, the latest rebound, of course, uh, was boosted by the slump in the pound. We are looking at an opportunistic timing when it comes for this sale. All eyes on who will ultimately take away uh, this uh, luxury shoe brand. Of course, uh, uh, the latest uh, rebound, of course, coming in as its uh, trademark stilettos uh, were cheaper for visitors in the UK. There's also been help coming in from a revival in the investor appetite for high-end goods. Now, it's an interesting time to be alive. Jimmy Choo up for grabs. Uh, ultimately, who will really take it away? It remains to be seen. Well, Molly, then what kind of bidders will attract to bid for Jimmy Choo? Do you think one of the competitors maybe uh, you know one of the biggest competitors uh, of the or the other retailers Zara or LD amateur will they likely to be you know bidding for Jimmy Choo is it that big a brand all in the realm of speculation at this point, Sumit. But what we do know, of course, is that it is going to be an interesting time ahead uh, whether or not any of these rivals will actually be interested in staking claim to this luxury brand. Jimmy Choo is up for grabs. Uh, this, of course, is an announcement which has caused ripples uh, in the market. Now, uh, all eyes also on the way ahead whether or not any of these rivals will actually throw in the hat for uh, staking claim uh, to this luxury brand. Well, thank you so much for bringing us these all interesting details about Jimmy Choo finally put on block. Thanks, Molly Gambir. Well, moving forward, now Chinese consumers are turning away from Hyundai Motor Company's offerings in its largest market, which are the result of problems what Chinese companies are facing, South Korea's largest automaker. A sedan-heavy lineup in an SUV market, poor brand perception and a nationalist backlash against its country's decision to host the U.S. missile defense system. These are the reasons why Hyundai and Kia, the South Korean uh, brands, are not very popular in China. Now, Hyundai has the wrong positioning in China. They are late to sell new cars and SUVs and have weak brand loyalty. Now, South Korea's biggest car makers, Hyundai and its affiliate, Kia Motors, were caught up in the calls for a boycott. The Seoul-based company was ordered to shut most of its discount stores in China on alleged fire safety rule violations. Hyundai is trying to plug the gaps in its portfolio by speeding up the introduction of more SUVs. Its iX25, Tucson and Santa Fe SUV models accounted for 22% of sales in China last month, trailing the industry average of 40% sales. Now, India will soon embark on an ambitious program aimed at switching most, if not all, of its vehicles to battery powered by 2030. And in an Elon Musk-like move, Narendra Modi-led government plans switch, introduce a program meant to switch two- and three-wheelers and buses to battery power by 2030. The plan relies upon keeping off subsidies and depending on a battery leasing strategy. The scheme is likely to be rolled out in a couple of months and offers limited tax breaks for auto companies. The proposed strategy, which encompasses selling vehicles without batteries, is in a contrast to vehicle policies in the West and in countries like Japan and China. Prices may come down of electric vehicles by 70% as part of scheme which relies upon battery leasing. When leased batteries run out of charge, motorists can swap them at recharge station as well.
Staying with India, where Indian Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has said India will continue to grow at 7 to 8 percent rate, an absolute normal for the nation under the current global environment. Now, Jaitley said, as far as the economy is concerned, all decisions taken by PM Modi led government are consistently in one direction. The aspirational class in India has become very large, and therefore, through the decision making of the government, there is a popular support for all the reforms in Indian market. Now, Chief of Qatar Airways has accused American carriers complaining over alleged subsidies to Gulf Airlines of bullying as he announced new U.S. routes in defiance of mounting airport restrictions. Now, U.S. carriers Delta, United and American Airlines have accused Qatar Airways along with Dubai's Emirates and Abu Dhabi's Etihad of benefiting from government subsidies to expand their transcontinental networks. Qatar Airways Chief Ab Akbar Al Bakr said he did not expect any action from Washington. Now, Qatar Airways was among the airlines affected by the ban imposed last month on electronic devices larger than a smartphone on flights to US from 10 airports in the Middle East and Turkey. Now, Baker, whose career Qatar Airways is offering free laptops to premium passengers in response to the ban, said Qatar Airways has faced some drop in business to US destinations already. Now, cautioning the major world economies against protectionism, Reserve Bank of India Governor Ojit Patel said using trade instruments for protectionism may take a nation on a trajectory different from that of growth. Now, Ojit Patel was speaking at the third Kotak Family Distinguished Lecture at the Columbia University's School of International and Public Affairs. The RBI governor's response has come at a time when countries like United States and Australia have tightened their visa immigration policies to ensure their homegrown giants don't outsource, instead hire local talents. Now, U.S. President Donald Trump's whole election campaign had revolved around buy American and hire American, and protectionism views got even stronger in European countries when Britain voted for Brexit last year in June. The U.S. President last week signed an executive order to review H-1B visa policy. Donald Trump thinks that it companies, pardon me, IT companies have robbed American jobs by abusing their H-1B visa policy. Staying with Visa News, where IT industry body of India, NASCOM, has came out in defense of its members, TCS and Infosys, saying the two accounted for only 7,504 or 8.8% of approved H-1B visas in 2014 and 15. Now, the U.S. has accused top Indian IT firms, TCS and Infosys, of unfairly cornering lion's share of H-1B work visas by putting extra tickets in the lottery system. Indian technology firms use H-1B visas to send their employees to work at customer sites in the U.S., which is the largest market for over 110 billion Indian IT export industry. Now, over the past few weeks, there is a growing sentiment of protectionism across various markets, including the U.S., that are seeking to safeguard jobs for locals and raise the bar for foreign workers. Now, TCS and Infosys together receive 7,504 approved H-1B visas in 2014 and 2015, which is only 8.8% of the total approved H-1B visas. While the two software exporters of India have not issued a formal statement on the issue so far, they have stated that they ensure compliance with norms in the markets that they operate in. It is time for a short break on Beyond Wallet. After the break, we will tell you why Indian markets are touching new highs. Stay tuned to Beyond. Welcome back to Beyond Wallet after the break. Now straight to market segment where Nifty Sensex hit record highs today. Nifty was up by around 88 points while Sensex was up by around 287 points. If we talk about other markets in Asian markets, the markets were also, uh, we can say that high Nikkei was around up by 1.07% while Hang Seng was up by around 1.09%. That's how the markets traded today across the globe. But in India, it was a very good news because the markets were touching new highs again and again so our guest is today uh, we are joined by our guest for markets 
Ashish Andani. Uh, good evening, Mr. Andani. We would like to ask you, first of all, uh, do you think this rally will continue for tomorrow as well? Yeah, definitely. I don't think there is any point in not believing that the rally will continue. We have closed uh, above 9,300. It, it, it in itself is a indication that the rally is here to continue. And, you know, the, the bears, the... Uh, the bullish uh, players are still on the you know uh, front foot. I think the, the we will we'll see new players maybe tomorrow participating and there is an expiry also on the Thursday. I think there are no you know uh, reasons why not to believe that the bullish uh, rally will not continue. And also, we would like to know from your side what is the basic reason why the markets are on a high. We understand few points that you know. Uh, or everything is right with Indian economy, global markets are also stable. But what is the core reason for this apart from all of that? Okay. The first reason was the uh, uh, Reliance result which came yesterday. The GRMs were good. The Geo subscription figure was okay. PatCam was almost uh, uh, ne uh, near where the estimates were. So it was the first uh, you know thing uh, which, which uh, helped the Nifty to you know, give a gap up opening. After that, the results which came, you know, the Indian bank result, which literally boosted the complete banking sector. If you see Axis Bank today, it was the major gainer in the Nifty, which which gained around three and a half percent. Stocks like Infratel, IOC, BPCL, you know, now everybody is expecting that if if the Reliance GRMs were good, IOC and BPCL would also, you know, give out the good the GRM. So that was again the reason stocks like m and Hero Moto, Bharti Airtel, you know, every stock which was not moving in the last 7 to 10 days started moving today. So it was it was an overall uh, rally in the markets and you know, when the markets broke above uh, 9 to 6, 5, 9 to 8, 5, we were expecting the market to touch 9300, uh, you know, anytime very soon. So I think the major uh, reason was the first trigger was Reliance result which made a gap up opening in the markets and then the news and events followed on. And absolutely, if we li would like to ask you, we all know that mid-cap was the main gainer uh, in Nifty back today. Uh, going forward, what do you see over there? What are the stock-specific you know, recommendations you can give as far as mid-cap uh, is concerned in Indian markets, Nifty? Yeah, there are, you know, if we, if we see this complete rally, if I take a, a bit, uh, a few steps back, and see the overall yearly rally, which almost started from March 2016. Mid-cap stocks have gained much more than the large-cap stocks. And today it was also uh, the same. You know, stocks like Indian Bank, Godrej, uh, Infratel, Mindtree, Jain Irrigation. These are mid-cap names which are, uh, you know, shining, uh, you know, uh, very brilliantly and, you know, making 52-week high on the, on the charts. Every day, you know, if you talk about Jan irrigation, which is one of our picks also, that stock we recommend it around 95 rupees and we have a target of 150, currently trading at 115. So still there is huge scope for these stocks to go up. There is a huge re-rating. If you talk about the, you know, Met uh, department, which gave a normal monsoon commentary. So I think that was also a trigger, which, you know, fueled the whole uh, bullish rally. So monsoon, which was one, uh, worry it is still you know as is is no more a worry for the markets tcs infosys results which is which is you know uh, passed for the market so market is discounting you know going forward the next financial year earnings i i still think that mid caps will still outshine the large caps so today uh, nifty crossed 9300 what is the target for 9400 9500 when do you see these important points would be achieved by nifty uh, we think 9500 is a target which we could achieve maybe in the uh, coming uh, one quarter, maybe three, three and a half, four months. We could see 9500 easily on the markets because the results are not as bad as, as everybody was expecting. On the other side, you know, uh, Indian rupee has appreciated very smartly. And whenever the dollar is, you know, trying to uh, come up, you know, the positive news on the, on the Indian markets are taking the markets uh, much higher. So I think that 9500 could be a very uh, practical, you know, a, a reality maybe in next quarter or so. And uh, just a while ago, Wipro has announced the results where profits, uh, Q4 profit are up 7%. But Q1 revenue guidance has missed the estimates. They have announced one uh, is to one bonus also. What do you make out of it? Uh, Wipro is again a big company in IT pack. 
I think that the results were a quite uh, a bit positive uh, as it was expected by the street. I think it could be, you know, a slight positive opening tomorrow. But if we talk about the whole telecom sector, uh, sorry, the whole uh, IT sector per se, there are many negatives which are, you know, lying ahead of these these uh, companies. If you talk about the H-1B visa, which I was, you know, hearing very recently, where, you know, TCS and Infosys are, you know, uh, said that they, they have misused the uh, so-called uh, liberty which was given for the H-1B visas. And I think these news will ponder upon and they will multiply, you know, coming forward. For a long-term perspective, we are very, you know, not very bullish on IT since the last two, three quarters. And same goes for the telecom also. So I don't think uh, for a long-term perspective, these stocks are should be worth investing uh, as of now. And what target, uh, what uh, sectors would you recommend for our viewers in which they should not put their hands at all? Which sectors they should avoid at all costs? Uh, telecom is one sector uh, which I think they should avoid because the price war which is going on, nobody you know knows what the market share will be for Jio, maybe for the Bharti one year going forward. You know, uh, the companies are bleeding, although consumers are, you know, gaining uh, to to uh, a very high extent. So, ARPUs will uh, get limited to 285, 290 per uh, user, which is a very normal kind of ARPU. So, telecom is one sector which has to be avoided. IT is another sector which has to be avoided. So, these two sectors are uh, to be avoided. Pharma on a selective basis, whereas, you know, the uh, mid-care pharma is going good, but, but the large-care pharmas, which are highly, you know, uh, segregated for the US, UK side of uh, sales, they are seeing high pressure because the government has recently announced about the generic drug policy, which I think will be reality very soon. That will take a huge hit on the high cap stocks like Sun Pharma, you know, Renbexi, Dr. Reddy's kind of stocks. And another negative uh, factor for the pharma companies is the US Form 483 news, which comes you know, every next day we, we hear that another Form 40, 483 is being issued to a pharma company. So pharma, large-cap pharma, IT and, you know, telecom would be an avoid from my side. And what would be your, your saying on large caps? Would they be a complete no-no from your side? Because, again, lots of companies are from mid-cap and small-cap are there to be grabbed. So would you say that large caps are a clear no-no at this moment? No, on the contrary, I would prefer now large cap. If we see a Reliance, which is a large cap, India's most uh, now most valued company in terms of market capitalization, it was, if you see the last seven year returns and if we exclude the February, March kind of uh, movement in that particular stock, it gave no return. But then in the last uh, one, one and a half months, it is almost uh, returned 50 50% 50 returns we have gained from a company like Reliance. We talk about ACC Ultra Tech, which gained you know eight to nine percent yesterday. On the contrary, I would stick now towards the large cap because mid cap the valuation somewhere is is looking a bit expensive on the mid cap side. If we talk about gro uh, global markets, most of them are in green. Well, Nikkei and other Asian markets were mostly in green. U.S. markets are also in green. Uh, how, what do you have to say there? I think the rally in the global markets just started. You know, I was just reading a news uh, where. Um, uh, Trump would announce a cut in the, uh, uh, you know, the taxation, the corporate and the individual tax. If it comes by and there is a, uh, you know, uh, 500 or 600 basis point, which is five or six percent cut in the corporate tax, also there will be a huge rally in the in the markets, both in the emerge and the emerging markets. So I think that the global market rally is still here to, you know, continue. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Nandani, for talking to us today and sharing your thoughts as far as markets are concerned. Well, that's it for Vyond Ball today. For more news and updates, stay tuned to Vyond. And thanks for watching us. We will keep on bringing all the news linked to business and other sectors for all of our viewers. Thanks for Vyond watching once again.